Hello, my name is Dan Farcucci. I'm with U4 Services located in Buffalo, New York, and I'm excited to welcome you to this presentation regarding sterilization of indoor air. U First Services was started in 2013 to bring to market innovative scientific healthcare related discoveries, which are designed to enrich the lives of others. Some of these technologies were born through collaboration with University at Buffalo. There are three main focus areas at U First Services disinfection and sterilization, infectious disease control, and oral health care. We were thrilled to receive the 2018 Bright Buffalo Niagara Industry Partner Award for our collaboration with UB. And we recently were recognized as one of 12 New York companies to receive support from New York State to help combat the COVID-19 pandemic. I think most of you will agree that the way we're going to control the spread of the current and future viruses is by improving the quality of indoor air, especially in confined and highly populated places, such as those found in schools and in hospitals. Today, HEPA filtration is the standard for air treatment, and in recent years, alternative technologies, such as UVC and bipolar ionization, have come to the forefront. There's a lot of excitement in the media about these technologies, but we rarely hear about the drawbacks associated with them. With HEPA, the first obvious thing we need to recognize is that the system merely traps airborne pathogens instead of killing them. HEPA filters create a breeding ground for harmful contaminants such as mold and bacteria that can grow on them. And it's well known that filters are not able to trap all pathogens. HEPA filters need frequent replacement, resulting in high operating costs. And when filters are replaced, it's recommended that the technicians suit up to protect themselves. But how often does that happen? And is it possible for harmful pathogens to be reintroduced back into the air when the filters are replaced? Air is continuously contaminated by airborne pathogens. The dissemination of pathogens from HVAC-associated transmission is widely known, given that numerous studies have shown that biological pathogens are capable of growing on filters, negatively affecting the quality of filtration. HEPA filtration must always be augmented because air treatment in facilities falls in two main categories, air filtration and air purification. Air filtration, of course, involves passing air through a system to capture the physical contaminants, versus air purification, on the other hand, breaks down the airborne contaminants by subjecting them to a biochemical process. The air quality management strategy must include a combination of air filtration and air purification in a complementary manner as part of an overall infection control management strategy. Bipolar ionization cleans the air inside buildings by using an electronic charge to create a plasma field filled with ions, which robs them of their life-sustaining hydrogen particles. Unfortunately, bipolar ionization has hazardous environmental effects. Ionizers generate potentially dangerous levels of ozone, which could harm us and our environment. The long-term CO2 buildup negatively impacts cognitive abilities, which is of particular concern for schools, because as we know, children are more vulnerable than adults to the adverse effects of breathing CO2, in addition to inhaling indoor air contaminants. And the efficacy of bipolar ionization is questionable and certainly cannot make the claim of air sterilization. UVC works by emitting short wavelength ultraviolet light to kill or inactivate microorganisms by destroying nucleic acids and disrupting their DNA so they can no longer perform their cellular functions. However, just like bipolar ionization, UVC lamps generate ozone and some UVC lamps also contain toxic mercury. UVC lamps lose their efficacy by 15% every six months to a year, so frequent replacement is required. Another drawback is that the system requires what we call quote-unquote exposure time, which could be several minutes. And also the system only treats areas where the UVC light shines on directly. So in shadow areas, for instance, those areas are not treated. Microorganisms that pass through UV light with some velocity 
may not get enough exposure time to be affected. So here again, the efficacy is questionable and certainly cannot make the claim of air sterilization. I'm excited to introduce you to Sterispace, an air sterilization technology. Sterispace has set a new standard for air sterilization. In fact, the term air sterilization never even existed up until now because it was not technically possible to sterilize air prior to Sterispace. Sterispace uses patented compressive heating technology to sterilize the air and free it from biological contaminants, including viruses, bacteria, and hardy spores. Sterispace doesn't trap the pathogens, but actually kills them by using compressive heating technology. This technology has been tested and validated extensively through funding by the U.S. Department of Defense and has repeatedly demonstrated an effective kill rate of 99.9999%, achieving a sterility assurance level of 6 log reduction. Anything less than 6 log kill is not sterilization. Sterispace is the only technology available on the market today that actually sterilizes the air. There is no other technology that can make this claim. Sterispace is scalable in size and can achieve airflow rates varying between 250 and 5,000 cubic feet per minute. The compressed air is treated uniformly, so there is no untreated air or leaks. By adding a chemical catalyst, the system can also eliminate select exhaust pollutants, VOCs, and common industrial chemicals. Sterispace does not require nauseous, corrosive, or hazardous chemicals to destroy biological contaminants. It uses a more natural, holistic process to sterilize the air, which doesn't have any toxic byproducts or cause any harm to the environment. Sterispace can be installed as a standalone unit on the exterior ground to treat the air in a room, as illustrated on the left, or can be integrated with an existing HVAC system on the rooftop, as illustrated on the right. If a facility does not have an HVAC system, but rather has a boiler system, the Sterispace technology can still be integrated into the facility through essentially its own HVAC system. As mentioned, Sterispace technology has been tested and validated extensively through funding by the U.S. Department of Defense and has repeatedly demonstrated an effective kill rate of 99.9999, also known as a 6-log kill. Some of this testing was done in collaboration with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at Research Triangle Institute, and the kill rate achieved was a staggering 99 0.99999, otherwise referred to as a 7-log kill, which is simply unheard of. If you're interested, please contact us if you'd like to see the abstract for some of these studies. Studies have shown that the COVID-19 virus is rendered inactive at temperatures of 70 degrees Celsius. So, Sterispace is indeed able to achieve thermal destruction of the COVID-19 virus since it operates at temperatures up to 240 degrees Celsius, which is three times higher temperature than needed. FDA released guidance on the resistance of microorganisms and noted how highly susceptible the COVID-19 virus is to inactivation. The challenge with COVID-19 is not the ability to kill it, but rather the high transmission rate of the virus, especially in confined indoor spaces. Please feel free to click on the links on this slide to access the peer-reviewed studies. Schools is an area where we must focus, given its vulnerability, and Sterispace has flexibility in how it's deployed in the schools. For instance, you can configure it to create negative pressure in an isolation room for students, faculty, or staff with a known infection. Most schools now have an isolation room, but the air in the room is shared with other rooms in the facility, which defeats the purpose of having an isolation room. By using Sterispace to create negative pressure, the contaminated pathogens in the room will not spread to other rooms through the HVAC system. This helps to ensure infection containment and prevention of disease outbreak and super spreading in schools, which of course can cause the school to shut down. Sterispace can also be configured to create positive pressure 
in a room to protect immunocompromised students or faculty or staff, which protects them from pathogens and external ambient air. As you know, the Biden-Harris administration established the American Rescue Plan, the AARP, and within that plan is the Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Fund, otherwise known as the Ursur Fund, which provides $122 billion in relief for pre-K through 12 schools to return to in-person instruction as expeditiously as possible this spring. Last month, states received access to two-thirds of their URSA allocation, which is a total of $81 billion. To receive the remaining $41 billion, each state must develop and submit a quote-unquote use of funds plan to the U.S. Department of Education for approval prior to June 7, 2021. When it comes to ORs, ERs, and other healthcare settings, it's common practice to sterilize medical instruments, and it's equally vital to also sterilize the air. The air management portion of protecting a healthcare facility's occupants and users is often underestimated and undermanaged. Typically, we bring sterile instruments into the OR, remove them from the sterile pouches, and expose them to non-sterile air. Could this possibly be the reason why we're seeing a rise in hospital-acquired infections? You might be starting to see now why the U.S. Department of Defense has such a keen interest in this technology. SteriSpace was originally developed for biological and chemical defense, which it's able to achieve by sterilizing the air. SteriSpace can be used for portable emergency shelters, both soft-sided and hard-sided. The shelters can be used for disaster relief or emergency and command control centers. We have worked with the company in the past to develop a patient isolation system that can be deployed where highly contagious patients need immediate isolation to prevent disease outbreak. Nothing less than sterilization should be acceptable for air quality. SteriSpace sets a new standard of care for indoor air treatment to protect people against the airborne pathogens that could cause disease outbreak, as we have experienced with the current pandemic. SteriSpace gives you the best of both worlds, the highest level of efficacy available on the market, without the drawbacks or side effects of alternative technologies. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. The UFIRST Services team is excited to collaborate with you in bringing this and future pandemics under control.